Today I want to talk about evaluator reliability and this video is based on an excellent paper from Johnson and Goldsmith, the importance of quality data in evaluating aircrew performance. Now first of all, what is reliability? Reliability is concerned with the consistency of measurements. So for example, if we repeatedly weigh the pot of gold and we observe very little or no variations in the outcomes, we then could conclude that our measurements are reliable. Furthermore, we want to extend the definition of reliability to include two more properties, sensitivity and accuracy. Let's first talk about sensitivity. What is that? We have here the temperature curve of the airport of Atlanta from last week. So there's a measurement for every day. And here sensitivity refers to the degree to which observations of an evaluator co-vary with changes in the object that is being measured, which is the actual true temperature. Now let's see how evaluator A is estimating the temperature. And we can see that evaluator A's estimates co-vary very closely with the true temperature. Whereas now, for example, evaluator B deviates almost randomly from the true temperature. We would conclude that evaluator A is more sensitive to temperature variations than evaluator B. In this sense, it can be said that evaluator A is more reliable than evaluator B. The second part of reliability is accuracy. Now, accuracy refers to how closely our measurements correspond to the absolute magnitude of what is being measured. This can be seen if we look at evaluator C, who is extremely sensitive to actual variations in the temperature, which means his estimates co-vary precisely with the true temperature, but who consistently overestimates the temperature by 5 degrees. In this regard, we would conclude that evaluator C is not very reliable. So in sum, reliable measurements always must be both sensitive and accurate. Now we want to discuss two methods for assessing the reliability of observations. We will start talking about sensitivity. There are two ways to assess sensitivity. The first one is the so-called rater referent reliability. What is that? Let's assume we have here a group of evaluators who must grade all the same aircrew performance that was previously scripted in a video. The video captures specific deviations from the qualification standards, for example on a four-point grading scale. In this case, we have an objective basis for grading performance, the reference score. The rate of referent reliability is the correlation reflecting how closely an evaluator's ratings agree with some referent. What does that mean? Let's make this a little bit more concrete with this table. In this table we have five grades or performance indicators of two evaluators and the referent. These referent grades can be considered as the true objective grades. Evaluator 1 now, for example, gives the same grades as the referent. Let's draw a scatter plot for evaluator 1 and the referent to get some more intuition. For performance indicator 1, both grade a 2. For indicator 2, both grade a 3. For indicator 3, both grade a 2 again. For indicator 4, they grade a 4. And for the last indicator, both grade a 1. In this case, we have a perfect agreement between evaluator 1 and the referent, and this can be seen because all the points fall on the best fitting straight line across the graph. In this case, the correlation of the rate referent reliability reaches the maximum value of 1. Now let's make another example. Let's assume these are the grades of evaluator 2 and we create another scatter plot for evaluator 2 and the referent. For performance indicator 1, the referent grades 2 and the evaluator grades 3. For indicator 2, the referent grades 3 and the evaluator grades 1. For indicator 3, the referent grades 2 and the evaluator 1. For indicator 4, the referent score is 4 and the evaluator grades 3. And for the last indicator, the referent grades 1 and the evaluator a 2. 
If we now draw again the best fitting straight line, we can see immediately that the deviations from this line are much higher than in the first example. In this case, the correlation of the rater referent reliability is only 0.22. So the rater referent reliability is one way to assess sensitivity. We compute the correlation between the referent grades as the true objective score with each evaluator. The second way to assess sensitivity is the inter-rater reliability, which is the most commonly used method and does not require a reference score. The inter-rater reliability is a correlation reflecting the degree to which a group of evaluators agree with one another. So in our example here, we have to compute the correlation between evaluator 1 and 2, which is the same as the rater referent reliability between the referent and evaluator 2, because evaluator 1 has the exact same score as the referent. In this example, the inter-rater reliability between evaluator 1 and 2 is 0.22. So what we would like to have is an overview with the correlation coefficients between all the evaluators and the referent. How could that look like? In this matrix, we can note all correlation coefficients. Each value is entered twice. Here we note the rate of referent reliability between the referent and evaluator 1. The same value must also be written into this cell. The rate of referent reliability between the referent and evaluator 2 must be noted into these two cells. The inter-rater reliability must be noted here. And because the correlation with the evaluator and the referent themselves is always 1, this is noted here. Now let's go to the MINT system and see how to produce this overview. So here we are in our MINT system. And in this department, uh, I prepared this uh, before, we have our evaluators, five evaluators. We have the referent with the gold standard, and we have a kind of virtual resource, which is the video. So it is this resource who receives the grade. The evaluators, they have to grade this video resource, and it will be compared uh, with this referent grade. On top we have these 10 performance indicators and you can see if I select for example performance indicator 1, the only resource so to speak who received that performance indicator 1 is the video. We can look into the details and you can see that he received all performance indicators 6 times. Makes sense. 5 evaluators plus the referent. And performance indicator 1, 1, 1, with a, he received it with a 2, with a 2, with a 3, with a 3, with a 2, and with a 2. If we double click on one of these, for example, you can see this was done by evaluator 2. Right? So evaluator 2 graded a 2 for performance indicator 1. Let's make another example. This one here, for example. So you can see here that some of the evaluators graded a 1, all the others graded a 3. So the referent graded a 3, and the 3 then is the correct value, so a 1 is definitely not correct. That is what we can see here. So that was all pre prepared before, and now I want to show you how to create this correlation matrix. We go to Reports, and we will first create a new category. And uh, let's say we call it IRR for our example here. And under IRR, we create a new report. Okay, let's go immediately to the query because that's the important part here. And we are looking for resource record items. And we need not many properties. One is the record item, definitely, that we would like to see. Then we want to see the grade, of course, right? So that's the most important thing. What is the grade? Here it is. Also, we would like to see the name of the evaluator. So created by name. And also the ID to make because maybe 
in a, in a real life, the name is not unique, but the ID is unique. So we will also select the ID of the evaluator. And then we change the header here. So to make it easier, let's call this record item. The ID is called ID. And the name is just name. Okay, like this. Or let's call the ID evaluator. Maybe that makes more sense. Evaluator. Like this. And then we have a condition because we are only interested in the record items that are in the subtree of our performance indicators, right? We don't want to see all the other record items. So just in this subtree. Let's run the query. Okay, here we are. This is our overview. So if I sort here, you can see evaluator one, graded all 10 record items, evaluator two, graded all 10 record items, and so on and so on. So this is what we have here. But now we want to create, or we have to create the uh, matrix. And uh, with the last version of Mint, we have here the Jupyter Python notebook included. In order to open that, we first have to save our query. We do that. And we need two packages in our Python environment. One is import pandas as pd and import numpy for our computations as np. So this is the first thing. Let's move this a little bit up so that you can see it better. And then mint offers a variable which is called mint underscore df, mint underscore df for data frame, right? This is what comes by default. Let's see how that looks like. This variable mint underscore df represents the result of this upper report. So in this data frame, in this Python data frame, you have this, all this data available, and now you can make your computations. So for example, here we can see only the first three entries here, like this. So now mint underscore df is the variable that represents the data from our report. The first thing that we do now is we create a pivot table and we call it pivoted, pivoted. That is mint df, pivot, we can look into that pivot table. And the index is our record item, record item. The columns is the uh, evaluator. And the values, of course, is the grade. Let's see how that looks like. Pivoted. Perfect. So you can see evaluator one. Evaluator 1 graded for performance indicator 1, 2. Right. Now, from here, it is just one step to create our correlation matrix. So we call it correlation matrix. And that is the pivoted table. And it is one, one statement correlation, and we want to print it. Relation matrix. Here we are, right? That looks nice already. We are getting closer. Here you can see now the correlation between our five evaluators and the rater. Uh, but we would like to see just um, two decimals. So round decimals equals two. Let's see how that looks like now. Perfect. 
This is our correlation matrix. If you want to see this correlation matrix without the rate, without the referent data, this can be easily done by removing all rows from the original table where the name is uh, RR1. Let me show you what I mean with this. Uh, if we want to see only the raters, only or only the evaluators, not the referent, only raters, then we go again with mint df, that was our original data frame, and we locate for uh, all rows that have where the Evaluator, evaluator is not RR1, like this. Only raters. Here we are. And now you don't see the in the name. You, this is the table like the original one, but without the referent, right? Without the referent. And now you can do the same thing that I did with this first thing to compute the inter-rater reliability matrix. I hope that explains a little bit how you can do this exercise with the MINT system. Thank you.